We just started our tour in Salonike uh, and now you see the one of the iconic buildings, iconic structures uh, of the city. It is called White Castle uh, and it was built uh, in Ottoman Empire time, uh, in the time of Kanuni Sultan Suleiman. You can also visit inside of that castle. Uh, the entrance fee is something like 3 euros. We will see right now, we are going there. Uh, and also it is one of the structures in UNESCO World Heritage List. Uh, it is called White Castle, but actually the white color uh, is not now available. <laughs> so it's now uh, in its original color. Today weather is not so good. It's a bit rainy and cloudy, but still have a, a nice walk in the beach, in the Aegean Sea side, and reach that castle. And afterwards we will visit the other the historical places uh, inside the city. This is the top point of uh, White Tower. Uh, I was calling it like White Castle, but it was wrong. <laughs> it is the White Tower. Uh, and there are six floors uh, in the tower. In each floor uh, you can see uh, some videos and photos uh, about the culture, history uh, and about the people's daily life. Entrance to the tower is 2 euros and if you want to use uh, one other guide uh, it's 3 euros. Uh, and without other guide, if you don't know uh, Greek, uh, it's impossible for you to understand something because everything uh, in here is written in Greek. Uh, this city's history is very old. Uh, it started in uh, Roman Empire time uh, and it, it was uh, a place that uh, many people from different cultures uh, had been lived. Uh, so one of the, them was obviously the Ottomans uh, and after that now uh, Greek uh, people are living in here. You can also learn some details uh, about the important historical uh, points uh, in this city. If, for example in 1917 there was a very big, very huge uh, fire in the city. Uh, almost uh, one of three uh, of the city was uh, destroyed, burned and many people uh, became homeless after that fire. Uh, also, many important structures, uh, ancient church, uh, cathedrals uh, were uh, damaged in that fire. This place requires some time uh, to visit, uh, at least half an hour, uh, but I think it's worth uh, to spend that time in here because uh, it represents and it tells you uh, all the history, all the culture of the city. So I suggest you to come here and visit this tower. Also, since it's a tower, uh, there's a nice city view from the top point. Uh, I'm sure in the summertime it will be better. One side there is the agency and the other side is the whole city. This structure is called Zongo Polis. Zongo Lo Polis umbrellas, yes, that's right. It was designed by a famous Greek artist. Uh, and it's like the symbol of the city. Uh, actually, I was expecting a much bigger uh, and more colorful maybe uh, sculpture, but it's also interesting. Uh, and since today is uh, also rainy, uh, I'm perfect match with the combination of these umbrellas. <laughs> This is Galerius Gate, one of the most uh, touristic structures uh, of the Saloniki. Uh, this is called Galerius uh, because it was built uh, at the late uh, 3rd century and in the beginning of uh, 4th century. And in that time the emperor uh, was Galerius, so this was built for him. Uh, this uh, square is one of the oldest historical places in the city. You see also Rotunda uh, Mosque right now, but it was previously uh, a church, originally a church. This square and the structures uh, right here should be in your checklist in Saloniki. And now uh, we are in Colors uh, Urban Hotel and I'm with Christina, one of the owners of the hotel and our new friend in Saloniki. <laughs> Uh, as you know, we like uh, to meet with local people and get advices uh, from them because it's better to learn the city from them and uh, do the uh, visit. That's why uh, we 
meet with Trust Christina. Alone, yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> She's also traveling a lot and she is uh, doing the same. <laughs> she told me that. So, Christina, tell me about uh, the city, like the general uh, introduction, and then we will go into details. Look, I think Thessaloniki is a, a very nice city for, you know, a long weekend. It's a, it has the perfect size. It's a one million uh, uh, resident city and uh, we have a very, very young, it's the youngest city in Europe. So also, it is uh, the second biggest city of Athens, right? Uh, yes, the second biggest city I agree. in Greece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's, uh, in Europe, it's the city with the youngest population. So in one million people, we have 220,000 students, uh, which means there is people all day and all night going out. It's a very, very uh, hospitable city. It's a very lively city and uh, uh, I don't know if uh, some people might disagree, but according to most Greek guests, uh, Thessaloniki has the best food in Greece mm -hmm. uh, because it's a mixture of uh, its past. So in uh, Thessaloniki, you can, the Greek uh, the cuisine, the local cuisine is a mixture of uh, some Eastern cuisine, mm -hmm. some Balkan cuisine, some Greek cuisine, and also some Italian cuisine. So food is culture is so rich. Very, very rich, very aromatic, very interesting. And uh, we do have a, a lot of tourists that visit uh, Thessaloniki for all of these reasons. Yeah. Like nightlife, we are in the seven top cities in the world for nightlife. Perfect. I yeah. wasn't know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 we do, we do. Um, we have a very, very, a very large culinary uh, industry and it's, it's a very good value for money. So you do get to taste the very authentic tastes, but in, in normal, normal price range. And um, it's because of uh, all these students and all these, uh, all the past of Thessaloniki, it mm -hmm. has been a city loved by, yeah. uh, by its visitors. Uh, we are supposed to be a very hospitable city. People, Greek, I mean, this is all uh, what our guests say as well, uh, that, oh, Thessaloniki, it's in my heart, every time I visit, everybody's smiling and they are friendly, and I think it's true. Yeah, it's true. It's been like one hour we came to the city and we met with three people, and yeah, three of them are the smiley, friendly, <laughs> <laughs> so it's true, I believe. Uh, so also this region is uh, famous with the beaches, I think. It's a uh, Thessaloniki. Not the Thessaloniki, maybe, no, but no, around. But around here, like the, the first beaches start in like half an hour drive. Uh -huh. So it's. Uh, Thessaloniki is a port, uh -huh. so you cannot swim here, but uh, um, in, within half an hour, beaches start. Like mm -hmm. the Chalkidiki, Katerini, uh, it's near the, some islands. So it's. Uh, during the summer, we do have a lot of guests uh, from all over Europe, from mm -hmm. all over the Balkans, who come by airplane or car. They stay a few, one or two nights in Thessaloniki, and then they start visiting. Okay, first here. cultural trip and then the yes, uh, beach yes, tour. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, what's the best time to visit uh, the city? What do you think? Look, I think it's um, during the winter time, and I mean, by the winter season, I mean something like end of October until April. That's like okay. the lower season. One can visit a lot of culture, a lot of history, because Thessaloniki is a very historical city as well. It's uh, the oldest city in Europe that has never been abandoned. So it's like very densely built. Uh, there's uh, five cities, one Layers. on top of the other. Okay, okay, yes. okay, so it's very interesting, you know, to get lost in the city center. It's we all, will do it. <laughs> it's all, it's all very nearby as well. It's, it's, we have many nice, you know, film festivals, a lot of music, a lot of. Um, things to do during the winter and enjoy this culinary uh, and cultural trip. Mm -hmm. And during the summer, the higher season, uh, it's beautiful to uh, because you see a different, uh, a different face of the city. Everybody is out. It's a very lively, very lively city. Everybody is by the seafront, walking, dancing, laughing. <laughs> you know, we like to enjoy. Uh, the life. And so, you know, during the summer one can uh, do it 
with uh, some extra trips around Greece, like some Greek islands or mountains, meteora. Yes, yes, it yeah. can be. By the way, it's January now, uh, but the weather <laughs> is not so cold. It's a bit rainy today, it's our yes. bad luck, but it's uh, still okay, I think. Yes, yes. So let's talk about your hotel. Uh, tell us our, your story, your family's story. How did you decide to do something like that? We do have now three uh, small hotels, all, mm -hmm. all in the city center. Uh, each of the hotel is a little bit different. Uh, uh, they have different concepts, right? Different concepts. Uh, the, we do have colors rooms and apartments in Valauritu Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we the are area, staying there. <laughs> yes, the area is very lively and energetic, a lot of nightlife. Uh, and it's more like an apart hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have Color Central Latatica, that is a boutique hotel of 12 rooms in the central square of Latatica. Mm -hmm. And we do have Color Serpent Hotel where we are now. Yes. Uh, it's 26 rooms on Tsimiski Street, the most, it's the most central street of mm -hmm. Thessaloniki. It's a listed building. Uh, and it's a four-star hotel, so it depends what each one wants to do. Um, it, it all started eight years ago, it's a business that me and my brother Fotis Dragopoulos started. Um, we are both traveling a lot and uh, we wanted to um, make a home for modern travelers. Um, Modern travelers now, you know, they want something central, they want something cute, they want something design conscious, but also good value for money. You know, if you go somewhere and you don't really leave the destination or enjoy it, even, you know, if it's for a meal, uh, I think it, it doesn't really stay with you. You don't really understand the destination, the people, yes. how, you know, life is there. And I think that's the only reason to travel. Not yeah. the only, but that's the basic reason. <laughs> yes. I think you tried to, you have tried to create a place that you want to yes, stay yourself. Exactly. Yes. 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 We have also decorated the places uh, uh, alone. We have done most most of it alone. Yeah. Uh, did you work with a, a, I don't know an expert because yes. the design is so nice and unique. Yes, some of it we have done ourselves, some of it uh, we have uh, also uh, spoken with experts, mm -hmm. uh, but everything is very, very personalized. I mean, each room, we have 56 rooms, each room is different. Uh, this room is called the Paragon because it's, it's not uh, a perfect square. Then okay. it, we have a room called Love, Music, <laughs> Fairy Tale, you know, the Garden, it all. And, it's what we would like to see as uh, as guests. Very nice, and I also like it very much. I just <laughs> want to say that. Good, good. Uh, and when we come to the touristic places in the Thessaloniki, uh, I know the uh, White Castle, Atatürk's yes. house for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, there's something like a gate. I don't yeah, remember the, the name. Yeah, of Triumph. Yes, yes, and Hagia Sophia, of course. Mm -hmm. And yes. what else? What can you suggest us? Uh, I would definitely, definitely suggest going to the old town. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the top? Yes. yes. Thessaloniki okay. is built like this, so uh, there is an old town. Uh, or uh, and uh, it's in, within walking distance. I would definitely suggest doing uh, the Galerian complex, which is uh, the Roman part of Thessaloniki. What he said, like uh, near the Hagia Sophia uh, Church, uh, the Arch of Triumph, ah, Marino yeah, Square, uh, the Camara, um, all of this. And this is what we call the Galerian complex. Then there is uh, the markets uh, of Thessaloniki. There are some markets that are from the Byzantine times, um, and you know it's it's very interesting to see you know how modern life is having shoulders, yeah, okay. yes, with uh, you know places that have been here for a thousand years. So one last question: When we are returning to our home, what should we bring with us? Oh, like look, gifts. Thessaloni yeah. <laughs> yes, Thessaloniki is very, very famous for its sweets. Mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely, it's, it's a very popular thing to take with you tureki. Tureki mm -hmm. is like brioche bread, which is sweet, or bugatza, or trigona. Trigona is like a triangle uh, dessert, 
Oh, yes, pura kia hazi fodu. There is many. If if one has a sweet tooth, Thessaloniki is good and bad. Oh, <laughs> you know? okay. Uh, what else? Uh, maybe some tsipuro, uh, which is grappa. Uh, it's, what? It's a drink. Ah, okay. With double distilled ouzo, which is traditional here in a special the type of ouzo. Yes. Ah, maybe it's this can double try. distilled. Yes. And then I don't know some herbs, so you can olives, you know, cook. olive oils. I so olive too oil. Many, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's it's not that Thessaloniki is a typical olive oil pr producing Actually, region. Actually, all the Asian yeah. side. <laughs> yes, some wine. Well, Greece is has got some really really red good. or white. <laughs> uh, it depends, but okay. uh, for me, I, I'm a more of a red wine fan. I can definitely suggest okay. a few ideas. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes, and some sun. You know. If, if, one doesn't have sun at home. It's not a day yes, not today. today. <laughs> but yes, some uh, some sun and some happiness. Perfect. So it's very nice to meet you. Yeah. And thank you very me much too, for too, the information too. that you gave us. Uh, and I think uh, we have a new friend. <laughs> Uh, and maybe we can visit there uh, again and we will Good. meet you soon I don't know yes. and also you will be welcomed in Istanbul <laughs> so thank you nice to meet, nice you. To meet yes. you bye bye, bye. <laughs>